Hello, I'm Leah Binder. I'm president and CEO of the LeapFrog Group, and I am delighted to be joined today by uh, two people who are from a hospital that has truly inspired me and inspired all of us at LeapFrog, uh, our board, our community, our leadership in uh, throughout the country has been truly impressed by the accomplishments of this wonderful hospital. And I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'm going to let them tell you what they are. I'm joined by uh, Chuck Holland, who's the CEO of St. Bernard Hospital in Chicago, and also Michael Richardson, who's the Chief Quality and Patient Safety Officer at St. Bernard. So welcome to you both. And thank you uh, again for joining me today, but also for your um, inspirational achievement and for your community. Thank you, Leah. So let's, let's start with a question for Chuck, our CEO. First, why don't you tell us something about St. Bernard Hospital and what the challenge was that you faced? Sure. Uh, thank you, Leah. And I really appreciate uh, this effort to be here to talk about St. Bernard Hospital and the accomplishments we've made in patient safety. So St. Bernard is a uh, independent Catholic community hospital located on the south side of Chicago. Uh, importantly, we're a safety net hospital, which means greater than 50% of our patients have Medicaid as their source of payment for hospital services. So we are very constrained financially because of that, because uh, Medicaid um, doesn't cover the cost of care for our hospitals. So we really have to rely on uh, managing our expenses very well and looking for other resources to support the uh, healthcare resources we provide to the community. Um, as I mentioned, it's an independent community hospital. We don't belong to any other system. So we really um, you know, have to pull together as a team to address uh, the issues of healthcare for the community and the issues of patient safety that we're gonna talk about today. Importantly, the hospital is also the largest employer in the community. So we're a huge economic engine for the community as well. Uh, in, a, in a snapshot, I'd say, in the 120 years that St. Bernard Hospital has been in the community, we really, really have uh, lived up to our mission to address the healthcare needs of the community and to welcome all patients uh, uh, with high quality care uh, and to address as comprehensively as we can the healthcare needs that the community has, uh, um, uh, the healthcare needs of the community in, uh, in total. So two years ago, we gave you some bad news and Fast forward two years, you gave us some good news. Want to tell us what that is? Yeah, thank you, Leah. Well, when we first learned about the F grade that we received in uh, the LeapFrog Group ratings on patient safety, and that was two and a half years ago, I, I was taken aback. Uh, my team and I really thought we were all doing what we needed to do to address patient safety and to keep patients safe. Uh, the first thing I asked my team when we learned of that F was, who's in charge of patient safety and whose uh, efforts are focused on keeping people safe in the hospital and our patients safe? I didn't get a good answer, Leah, uh, and that surprised me. As it turned out, there was no one person who was totally focused on uh, patient safety and leading our efforts in improving patient safety, and that was a huge concern of mine. Don't get me wrong, um, I thought we were doing things to address patient safety in the hospital, but it was a diffuse process. It wasn't comprehensive and it wasn't coordinated. So as you mentioned, the first thing we decided to do was that we needed a senior team leader who was totally focused on patient safety. You know, That was their job, to address patient safety in a comprehensive way, to advocate for patient safety and to advance uh, all programs related to patient safety in the hospital. And so you hired Michael. I, I immediately uh, went on a recruitment effort and hired, uh, very fortunate to hire Michael Richardson as the chief quality and patient safety officer. Um, and his expertise and skill have been vital to this process, but I will say also we needed a roadmap. We needed to know well, what do we have to do? What do we need to focus on? Uh, what's important to focus on? Um, what steps do we need to take initially to you know, begin to improve patient safety in the short term and in the long term? And that's where the LeapFrog Group survey instrument really provided that, uh, serve that instrument for us to provide that roadmap 
to help us assess where we were at, um, to provide uh, kind of directions for where we needed to go and give us some uh, measures for what were we are accomplishing and what we still needed to accomplish. So Michael, what did you do first? Oh, well, um, that was a journey. You know, when I first got here, um, I somebody literally walked into my office and said, hey, I think this is yours and handed me this large binder. Um, and I said, what is this? And they went, oh, that's the leapfrog survey. So I was like, okay. So really it was just kind of breaking things down to, you know, what was the state of the nation at, at St. Bernard? What was going on? Um, what were the kind of things that we needed to fix immediately? And what could we fix immediately? So we started on that journey, breaking down the survey uh, and then started essentially having lots of, co of conversations because I think everything starts with that conversation. Um, and, and asking what are the barriers? What are the challenges that we have? You know, obviously, big concerns for us uh, at the time was, you know, medication safety. You know, while looking at the survey, looking at the data, we, we realized that we definitely weren't where we needed to be. So we put in things in, we put things in place immediately to correct that because that was kind of making me a little bit nervous. Fortunately, they, they had no significant errors, but as you know, thousands of patients die every year because of uh, medication errors. So we fixed that and um, I'm happy to say that for the last year and a half, we've been well above the 95% requirement for you know medication administration, safe medication administration. So that was one of the first things. And it went on from there, asking more questions. Uh, how can we fix you know computer physician order entry? Um, uh, how do we fix our hand hygiene? So you know we put a lot of things in, into place, uh, and it's an ongoing process. So to Chuck's point, using Leapfrog as a roadmap has definitely been helped. Uh, has definitely helped us to stay on that path. So, well, hand was, hygiene was one you did put a, a great deal of emphasis on. Is that is that true? Yeah, we did. You know, you know, obviously, uh, secret shoppers they work but it's very time consuming, it's labor intensive and, get, and you have to gather all that data and you have to kind of put it together. So we, um, you know, I talked to the board and I talked to Mr. Holland and talked to our infection preventionist and we looked at the, the um, three different companies that offer um, electronic hand hygiene monitoring. And we actually chose the BioVigil system because that met our needs and it, it allowed that uh, accountability down to the individual. So we could address the issues or behavioral issues with the individual and share that information back to them. So there was really no way they could say, well, it's not me. I'm doing my, you know, just having systems that monitor usage of um, the sanitizers really didn't fit our needs. So we were, we're happy with the biovigil system. And we're already, you know, in just over a year and a half, I think we're already into nearly 1.5 million um, captured episodes of hand hygiene. And we have a compliance rate, which is creeping up. We're, uh, we're at 92, 93%. So uh, I think that's a great achievement. I know a lot of hospitals, <clears throat> before they get a, a monitoring system, think they have higher rates than they actually do when they find out, when they actually do electronic monitoring, they find out it's not as high as they thought. So yeah. and, and we were exactly in that. I'm sorry, we were exactly in that position. We thought we were doing a really good job. But when it, come to, it comes to it, um, you realize by having this stronger data, you can actually change the course uh, and it, it, it gives you something to look back on. That's great. Now you worked with, uh, you had to have worked with some extraordinary nurses. Nursing is usually the most, uh, uh, the, the largest uh, set of the workforce, the largest group of, within the workforce, and they are critical to patient care and certainly to patient safety. So tell me about how you engage nurses, their leadership in the change that you made. Right. And you're absolutely right, Lee. You know, nurses play a crucial role when it comes to patient safety. Uh, they are at the thin end of the wedge. And as you know, uh, errors don't always start at the thin end, but they usually end up there. So it was really important to make sure that uh, we had systems in place that, you know, allow the nurses to stop these potential errors getting through to the patient. Um. So engaging, engaging nurses in the culture of safety starts with onboarding. You know, when they first come to the hospital, we have those, you know, they have a, a, a full hour session with me on patient safety where I talk about what causes errors rather than just talking about quality measures and joint commission and 
you know, we talk about really what causes patient errors. And it's, you know, it's a very engaging session. You know, it's brutal in the respect of, you know, the first question I ask is how many people die every year in the United States because of medical errors? And that kind of like makes, makes them a little bit somber. But then we get, you know, we need to start to engage them in that. And why is that question important? And why is that number important? Um, so, but maintaining that strong nursing um, culture, safety culture is driven from the top. You know, it has to come from lead, senior leadership, all the way from Chuck, our CEO, through the CNO, through nurse managers, they all play an important role um, when it comes to patient safety. So driving that message from the top down, and that's done through, you know, leadership rounding. We have structured leadership rounding, but we also have in the moment leadership rounding where myself and Mr. Holland and the senior team, We'll just get up and we'll and, and whatever spare moment we've got, we will walk around to each department, not just nursing, uh, but to all the departments and ask them questions. And it's really important to make sure that we we close the loop. When we ask nurses to put it in event reports in, you know, it's important that we give them that feedback. We appreciate them give, putting the event in a in a non-fearful way. Um, that they you know we're, we're not chasing them, we're chasing the system errors. Uh, so we're trying to drive that message. And we also introduced, you know, a just culture model um, to all our um, managers and leaders. You know, that model is a shared responsibility between leadership, where leadership is responsible to making sure that the systems that uh, employees work on under a, a safe and prevent errors. But also the employees have got a responsibility to make those quality choices in the, when they're making decisions when it comes to providing that patient care. So I think all that helps when we talk about how to engage, um, you know, nurses and employees and also recognition. You know, it, that's really important. Um, we It's really important that we recognize those employees for the good work that, that they that they do. And we recently just did a, had a management meeting and we recognized 20 individuals. Um, and that sends a message across the, 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 the organization that we really do. Leadership really does care about patient safety and and we want to support their efforts. I, I'm a big believer that part of the reason we have so much burnout nationally <clears throat> among nurses and physicians is when I think when people feel like their life work, which as a nurse, that's your life work, uh, when you feel like it's not recognized or when you feel like it's not consistent with the values of the organization you work for. So that's where your work to to really show that leadership is is going to stand forward on behalf of patient safety to make it easier to do the right thing um, mm -hmm. has got to have a big impact on everyone who works there. I mean, that's really, that's the key. So I, I salute that. Yeah, uh, Leah, I just wanna mention too that um, when, when you're talking about uh, recognizing folks and changing the language that we use in the hospital when talking about patient safety. So I, in particular, started talking about patient safety in a way that I hadn't before. Uh, and it really does help shift the perception. Uh, it helps uh, emphasize that we're changing culture here to prioritize safety. And it's a whole house effort, you know, all staff involved. And um, as Michael said, it start, starts uh, from the top down. And I, I recognize how I needed to change the way I talk about uh, patient safety and the way I include everyone in that effort, and um, I think that's made a difference. Can you give me an example of that, Chuck? How do you how did you change the way you talked about patient safety well, in, in management meetings? I, I think that I never I think that I used examples of how um, safe practices uh, also uh, impact quality of care, impact patient perception. Um, that um, Talking about uh, patient safety and our rounding, as Michael mentioned, you get feedback from employees. They, they think, oh, yeah, that something that occurred the other day or a practice that we have here may impact the way uh, we address patient safety. It just it helps kind of tease out more responses from folks than um, I had realized before. Uh, and uh, people just begin to identify patient safety as an effort that's not just, you know, over here in a box somewhere, but becomes right. a comprehensive responsibility for the entire team. Right. It also has a big impact when the CEO makes patient safety part of his conversation at virtually every meeting or just continual 
core issue. That that makes a big impact. So, yeah. so a lot of the change that you're talking about happened during the pandemic. So I presume the St. Bernard Hospital uh, had some major challenges related to the pandemic. And yet, when we look at your data, you showed a decrease, significant decrease in your hospital acquired infection rates, yeah. which uh, is pretty much the opposite of where the rest of the country went. Most hospitals, at least according to our data, most hospitals saw a significant increase in hospital acquired uh, infections during the pandemic. So can you tell me a little bit, maybe Michael, about how you how you accomplished that? Sure, yeah, and that's a great question because I was I joined St. Bernard kind of halfway through the pandemic, if you like, um, and I was very impressed in what they'd done. And I asked a lot of questions. How did you manage this? Considering the, the patient population that surrounds St. Bernard were more vulnerable than the general population. They were, there was a huge impact on our patient population. Um, but they, they put things into place. You know, they got capital investment, um, the, um, you know, from the, they, they got capital investment to, um, convert all the ED and ICU uh, units, uh, rooms, I'm sorry, into uh, negative pressure rooms, as well as some of the additional rooms on the med surge floor. Uh, we, you know, we were also fortunate to have a very strong infection preventionist leader uh, who was able to guide the whole team through all the, the, the regulatory changes that were almost happening on a, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it felt like on a daily basis of, and, and guidelines. Um, so she, she was able to, to corral all that information together and share it. Um, and when it came to PPE, I worked in organizations that were struggling with PPE. They were literally recycling um, N95 masks and making their own PPE, uh, where St. Bernard seemed to have a, a really good stockpile. I don't know whether that was just to look off, you know, being fortunate, but they never really had an issue with PPE. And that sends a real positive message to the, to the employees as well who obviously yeah. had their own concerns about this pandemic. There was a lot of unknown entities to it and how it was going to impact them and their families and the fear that surrounded it. Um, but, you know, like every organization, it, I, it wasn't perfect. Um, and St. Bernard had to adapt on the fly. They had to make changes uh, and just trying to stay a, a ahead of it. Uh, and I think that they fared very well because of that. Um, but still, we we had our own, you know, our own issues, and uh, like I said earlier, uh, our own our population around this hospital really did suffer because of the pandemic. So, well, I think clearly your culture uh, had to have shifted in order for you to have accomplished that much. I mean, you you truly defied all the odds. Right. What? Tell me about how you. Tell me about how your culture shifted. How did that happen? How did you did you well, galvanize? How did how did they get? How did that happen? Well, as you know, Leah, you know, culture is one of those things that takes time. It's it's called culture change is a journey, and we're still on that journey. Um, to Chuck's point earlier, you know, Saint Bernard had you know a a, a good safety uh, program, if you like, but it just wasn't it was wasn't all put together. So infection prevention were working. Um, you know, nursing was working, but how, how they were trying to come together was was there was some separation between the, uh, the departments. Um, and in 2021, we did our hospital survey on patient safety. I wasn't here then. I just I arrived just after. And it was a little bit dire, to be honest. You know, we had a very meager 60 percent participation rate. And that really doesn't give you a true. It doesn't really give you the truth about what the culture is, what's going on with the culture. So this year we decided we really needed to. Uh, invest in trying to get that participation rate up. So we set a goal, which I I, I knew at the time was probably high, but we said we, we're going to aim for eighty percent participation. And I was happy to I was happy to report we surpassed that. We you know we went up all the way up to about eighty eight percent participation oh, rate. Okay. So that gives us a true picture of what the employees feel about um, the culture of safety. And then if you add that to achieving some changes from the F grade, we went to a C grade, to a B grade, I think the employ employees could feel that there was a change in culture. Um, and then, of course, reaching the A grade uh, really boosted the morale and the engagement uh, of the employees. And I'm sure that helped with our hospital survey on patient safety participation. 
people really do, their employees really do want to tell us where we stand. Um, and we now have things that we need to fix. So because of that survey, but at least they, you know, we had something tangible that we could uh, we could work on. Well, it's, uh, it, it certainly is good for us to hear at LeapFrog that we were somehow helpful. Um, that is a, a positive. And, but we do know that transparency and just setting goals and measuring your progress can have an impact in and of itself. It's, even though it can be difficult at times. So we appreciate that you were able to use it so constructively. Um, so let me ask a question for Chuck. How have you seen your community outside your hospital, but also within your hospital, even your own board, your the people that you work with every day as your business community, how, how have you seen their reaction to your work in patient safety? Uh, I've seen it all very positively. I mean, there's just a, a greater energy about uh, our achievements, number one, and uh, greater energy around maintaining that. And what do we need to do to take the next steps to make sure that we can keep the momentum going? And I'll, I'll share one example with you about uh, how um, outside the hospital, the community impact, if you will, um, St. Bernard Hospital participates in what's called a healthcare transformation collaborative. And it involves 13 hospitals and federally qualified health centers on the south side of Chicago, all working together to address um, care coordination, access to care, um, uh, provider recruitment issues, so that we can really look at the south side and kind of look at our efforts as a, like a quasi health system, if you will, trying to really work together to coordinate care for patients in the most effective way possible. And these are organizations that, you know, the hospital has been familiar with for, for many, many years. We've had, you know, sometimes competitive relationships with those folks, sometimes, you know, good working collaborative relationships with them. And I was uh, very surprised that I'm on the board of that organization. So each organization has a board member that uh, we, we uh, sit up, participate on the board. And at last week's board member, I was very surprised when um, one of the board members before at the start of the board meeting um, wanted to take what she called a mission moment. And in that mission moment, she wanted to recognize uh, in front of the whole group, the St. Bernard's efforts in improving patient safety mm -hmm. and how important she felt that was for all of the institutions that were gathered together there, for all of the patients that they serve. And she told uh, several stories about her experience personally and the experience she heard from her patients about how things had changed at St. Bernard Hospital, how there was a different feeling there. There was a, uh, you know, a, kind of a, a greater emphasis on quality and safety and she could feel it. And she was really, really, um, very happy about that and was congratulating the hospital in front of all of the other institutions there. So that was really a great moment for me that, that showed our efforts had really gotten out to the community and also to those other institutions that provide care for the community as well. And Leah, if you don't mind, I'd just like to add something to what Chuck just said. You know, we recognize that the culture around safety um, around safety is a journey, but also the culture around patient experience is a journey. So we've just hired a director of patient experience and employee engagement to have the same focus on experience that we did on safety. Because as you know, there's a direct correlation between the two. So yes, we're really kind of now focusing on that. And we're also working with our biovisual partners. And also we just got a generous donation from Surfaceite who donated yeah. the Helio system. So we, we want to use that, their technology and translate that into patient experience. So the patients and the families can see that even small community hospitals like St. Bernard can have the same technology as their, you know, the, the larger tertiary hospitals uh, that surround us. So we want to try and send that message that St. Bernard is a safe hospital. It's a great message to the employees and great message to the community too. How do you, uh, as you look to your colleagues, you know, I think Chuck, you just told a great story about talking with your colleagues, about collaborating with your colleagues, which is great to hear. Um, what advice do you offer your colleagues or what contribution do you think you can offer in terms of um, uh, one particular issue that I think a lot of hospitals and health systems struggle with, which is health equity. 
I mean, this is an area that, that I'm certain you've grappled with given the population that you serve. Tell, tell me what your advice would be to colleagues across the country. Uh, Malia, I think that um, I would let my colleagues know that improving patient safety does take an upfront investment. And I think that's an investment also in um, the way we talk about uh, patient safety. So it's a you know it's a it's a resource, a human factor investment, if you will, and it's also a monetary investment. But I think if we're really serious about patient safety, and if we're serious about health equity being top priorities, that we have to walk the talk. And in our case, that investment was uh, first and foremost in the expertise that Michael Richardson brings to the table, and then in technology. So it really was a concerted effort to say, you know, we need to invest in this. We need to spend dollars to improve patient safety, uh, especially for uh, safety net hospitals like St. Bernard, investing in patient safety also creates other opportunities. And that's what I'd let my colleagues know. It's not just, you're gonna to have to spend money to address patient safety and get a better grade in patient safety, but it creates other opportunities for you. And, and we're a perfect example of that. It shows the community, it shows the staff, many of who are from the community itself, that uh, we're serious about uh, patient safety and that uh, quality outcomes are better in the hospital. Uh, and we're proving this by actions, not just by our words, that St. Bernard Hospital really truly cares about your well being. Uh, it shows to the board, it shows to our payers, the state of Illinois in particular, that we can provide high quality care. Uh, when an investment is made, and that uh, it's a win for them um, to see that, you know, St. Bernard Hospital has become an A hospital, despite the fact that 80% of our patients use Medicaid as their source of payment for the hospital, that were extremely resource challenged. But when you invest those, those resources in a focused way to improve patient safety, as I said, it creates other opportunities. And, and bottom line, you know, our investment, we're thinking, we're hoping, and we have evidence of, is providing a good return on our investment. And I'd, I'd say to my other colleagues that, that that is the case, both in improved staff morale and in improving patient outcomes. Now, I hope that also begins to translate down to increased reimbursement and financial support from payers like our, our Medicaid payers and our managed care uh, um, uh, payers who see that an investment in patient safety results in better outcomes for the patients who are seen and given healthcare at our hospital. I think patient safety is the ultimate example of what happens when you put patients first. Yeah. It's yeah. The only way to achieve safety is putting patients first, period. And, and that is uh, ultimately a, a health equity issue as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So I'll give you I'll give you both a minute for last words. Um, what do you want other hospitals? Any anything else you'd like other hospitals to know about your experience? We'll start with you, Michael. Uh, I think my advice would be don't shy away from the, the Leap Folk Survey. If you if you participate and you're struggling or you've not participated, then I encourage you to participate. You know, transparency. Um, in healthcare is is really important, um, and that's what we are trying to do here. We're trying to look at where we are and try and 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 stay on that journey, regardless of we 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 can't predict what's coming in the future, but we we will definitely stay on that safety journey. Wonderful words, thank you, Chuck. Yeah, um, similar uh, as I mentioned, you know, we thought we were doing everything we needed to do to address safety, and we had not participated in the survey. And then when we did participate in the survey, it opened up a whole new avenue for us of things we needed to focus on, ways in which we could improve uh, safety, you know, where we needed to start uh, and where we needed to get to. So I would say, don't be afraid of that survey, participate in that survey because it's a really, really helpful tool. And, uh, I, you know, I had my, my concerns early on about, uh, the survey itself, was it really measuring what we were doing to address patient safety? And now I can see that it really uh, was beneficial to us in the long run. And you just have to make that commitment to um, take the steps you need to take to uh, advance patient safety, because it really is going to create other opportunities for you. And as you said, Leah, it really does put the patient first when you focus on patient safety as your issue. Well, thank you for for 
really giving all of us at LeapFrog this acknowledgement that what we're doing is making a difference. Yes. But mostly, thank you for what you've done to save lives of people in your community and to make such a difference uh, in your hospital and for all the people you serve. I mean, that's really what it's all about for all of us. Mm -hmm. And you've inspired, uh, I think, more than just us at LeapFrog, you've inspired the country in what can be done against all odds. So thank you for that example. And thank you for being with me today and telling your story. Thank you. Really appreciate the time. Thank you, Leah.